So the biggest real estate transaction in the history of the Las Vegas Strip seems to be coming to pass. One company is buying all of the properties from another company for $17.2 billion. This is huge news. as a shock because I knew this might be happening, but I didn't think it would happen this suddenly. We're going to get into it. What company is it? How this would play out for you as a gamer, as a person who's traveling to Las Vegas, and you have to be on top of this stuff because it could change your entire scope of your vacation the next time you come or it might do nothing at all except for help super duper rich people get super duper richer. Are you a super duper rich person? What do you think of this deal? Uh, my name is Steven. How's it going, guys? I'm not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for future notifications. Special thanks go out to our sponsor for this video, Panay Magazine. I'm putting a second video up on my channel today, right when I put this one up. It's uh, going to be about uh, the Filipina Magazine, Panay Magazine. They're the sponsor this month. We interviewed three of their models over at Resorts World. Uh, super nice ladies, and uh, they're buying the biggest billboard in the world or in North America uh, on the side of it at Resorts World. And why are they doing that? And what brings them to Vegas? Why does Vegas matter so much to them? I think you will like that. Links are in the description below for checking them out. Guys, I think you're going to like this one. I just have an inclination. LOL. Uh, but anyways, if you guys want to support us further, VegasFaceMask.com. No S at the end. This is called Make It Rain. My wife makes these two for $25. We have solid colors as well. If you got to wear a mask because of Delta variants and all these things, then we're the only two that you'll ever need. Vegas Face Mask. No S at the end.com. MGM Growth Properties stock rallies after VICI Properties buyout deal. MGM's entire stock of buildings and physical property is being purchased. $17.2 billion, which is insanity. Let's go to the, the actual article. Okay, here it is on Market Watch. Okay, shares of MGM growth properties shot up. 7.47% uh, in the uh, pre-market trading Wednesday after the Real Estate Investment Trust announced in an agreement acquired by VICI Properties. Now, you might remember VICI from a previous episode of Not Leaving Las Vegas where they purchased the Las Vegas uh, Venetian and the Las Vegas Palazzo. So they're now a giant landowner on the Strip. It's kind of nuts. They're entering into a real estate investment trust, meaning that MGM is not going anywhere in Vegas. They're still going to be in the market, but they're just asset light. They said this last year and the year before that. We don't need to own buildings in order to have an operation in Vegas. We can sell our buildings for huge amounts of money, not make money off of the real estate in the future, of course, which means that they might not have a lot of faith in the market actually increasing in Vegas because real estate is always going to appreciate in value. But if they think it's appreciated as far as it's going to go, they might sell. They're also probably selling for another reason, but we'll get to that in a second. But what those REITs mean, real estate investment trusts mean, is that they're basically going to be going ahead had entering into agreement, whereas they're a tenant in a property that they used to own. The ownership transfers over to the VICI uh, group, and at the end of it all, they end up being renters in their building. Now, they can make some money off of the back end if the land does appreciate in value, but it's not as much as they might make if the land jumps 10 or 15% in value because they're, you know, Vegas is having its comeback. And then, then VICI is reaping all the benefits, but they're also taking all the risk. VICI is taking the risk that those buildings might go down in value. If we have some Omega variant that it's really gnarly and traffic and everything gets shut down again ever. And by the way, I have a video about that. You have to check out this channel later. I have some insider information on that. So be sure to subscribe to this channel. Um, but if what if another shutdown happened? Well, MGM doesn't worry because they got a bunch of cash up front. What does MGM Growth Properties actually own? Well, they own a lot of things. MGM Grand, Mandalay Bay, the Mirage, the Park, the Luxor, the New York, New York, the Excalibur, and the Park Theater. Okay, that's not just what they own here. I mean, they own stuff metropolitanly. So they own, um, you know, MGM out in uh, DC. They own the Borgata out in Atlantic City. MGM Detroit. MGM. Uh, Ohio, MGM Empire City Casino. I'm not sure where some of these are. Go look at that. We got Times Square, 15 miles from Times Square in Manhattan. And this one is in Ohio, of course. Well, they don't just own that. They actually own things regionally. So they own the, the Beau Rivage. Interesting story behind that. That was originally going to be what they were going to name the uh, Bellagio back in the day, the Beau Rivage. I'm not joking. That's the truth. Uh, the Gold Strike, uh, the MGM Springfield. I assume that's in Springfield, Illinois. So they basically own all this stuff. The ICI Properties now owns all that stuff. You might remember them, as I mentioned, from the company that actually purchased the Venetian. So they now own the Venetian as well. And uh, this was something that happened just on March 3rd. So lots 
lots of crazy stuff going on here. What's going on? Why is MGM doing this? Like I said, they have this quest to be what's called an asset light company, which means that they just focus on their gaming and they say we can be renters. It's kind of like if you were, you know, if you were a, a, a burger place and you're highly successful, but guess what? My land is now worth a hundred million dollars and all I do is make burgers. You decide you'd rather cash out on the hundred million dollars, take that, invest that money into building more expansion of your burger empire. And uh, you don't need to own the land that you're in in order to flip burgers. Now, on the flip side, you better be in a rock solid ironclad contract because the landowner of the new place could always tell you to leave just like anybody else. They could always evict you. And if they decide to evict you and bring somebody else in, well, then that's a big deal. However, this is a casino operation. It's not a burger flipping operation. So it's going to be a little more complicated than just getting rid of MGM in the future and saying, OK, we're going to give this to Caesars now. And now Caesars is running the gaming inside. They've developed long term relationships with players and gamers. They've developed long term relationships with entertainers. They've developed long term relationships with the marketplace. So MGM's not going anywhere, but they might be going to Tokyo. <laughs> or Japan, at least. I don't think it's in Tokyo. But there's a big development that MGM has been flirting with trying to get into in the Japanese gaming market. This gives them tons of liquidity in order to be able to do that. This also makes them look better on paper to Wall Street because they don't have the liability of the buildings hanging around their necks. So if they had to stop their gaming operations and their land depreciated in value, it's not a double whammy for them. They can just rest off the laurels of all the cash that they have going forward into the future and have people look at them and say, well, you know, you're not a risky asset sheet for us. You don't have all the these buildings that are sitting empty right now that you're paying property taxes on during a shutdown. God forbid we ever get there again during COVID times. And uh, you know what? You are just a gaming company, so I guess it's okay for us to take a chance on you when it does open back up. And that's kind of how this all works with everything. And I hope that explains it because I made this video three times and I really don't have... <laughs> A lot more time to do it. So if I missed anything, please fill me in in the comments below. I'd like to hear your opinions on all this. This will not change the end user experience for you pretty much at all. If anything, it just means that uh, MGM Resorts can focus more on uh, developing things that cost cash and uh, try to grow the value of their company by giving you more value as a traveler coming in. And that's my video today and I'm sticking to it. Once again, my name is Steven. I'm not leaving Las Vegas. Be sure to check out our sponsor for this month's videos, Panay Magazine. They reached out to me and my wife's from the Philippines. They said, hey, you know what? We like how you talk. Maybe this would be something interesting. And I said, okay, sure, we'll go with that. So they were super generous and nice. We have that other video of the interview dropping on the channel here as well. So make sure you check that one out too. Uh, now's the time of the video where I say visit VegasFaceMask.com if you need a mask. Caroline's been making these like crazy. She made 30 masks in one day. I can't believe it. We had 90 mask orders over the weekend. Kind of nuts. But these are the only two that you'll ever need. And we have them in solid colors too. Go around the back of your head and not the back of your ears. All right. Now we got to say three, two, one, click. Are you ready? I'm going to try to look at the camera. And we're going to go three, two, one, and click. Thank you.